Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to talk about plastic palettes uh, because they have some benefits and they have some downsides and I just want to kind of go over a few of them because you may be thinking about buying a studio palette and you may be wondering, do I want to go with plastic? Do I want to get an enamel butcher tray? Do I want to get a ceramic palette? Um, there are pros and cons to each and uh, hopefully I can help clear some up. So I'm going to show you probably one of the most common plastic palettes. These are a large um, studio palette and it's made from a very thin plastic. Now you can see that this is quite yellow. I got this palette um, about 20 years ago, so it's lasted pretty good. It was bright white when I got it, and um, I want to show you what the, the the issue with these palettes are. Now my first palette was similar to this. It uh, I got it in the early 80s, and I had it till I went to college. Actually, I had it throughout college, so I had it for a good 15 or 16 years. And uh, what happened to that one is the same as what's happening to this one, is that it's starting to get brittle and it's starting to, to break apart. So if you look like here, it's starting to crack. Can you, can you see that? It's like cracking and it's, um, it's just really brittle and it's starting to, uh, to crack at the corners. It's cracked at that corner. Um, it's cracked at this corner and it's discolored. So the inside's not bad because light hasn't gotten to the inside that much, but the outside has gotten quite yellowed. My other one that I had uh, from childhood was even worse because I used to store it on my windowsill because um, I grew up in an old farmhouse and we had really deep windowsills in my bedroom and I would just have my watercolor palette up there. And so that really yellowed and cracked, um, I think, faster than this one. This one typically would would live in a wooden palette box. so the light exposure was fairly nominal. Um, but the nice thing about these palettes is they're so lightweight. They don't, if you do want to travel with them, they don't, um, they're not heavy. And you could put them in a bag, you could put them in a palette box. Uh, they take up, they have plenty of mixing room. They're just a really nice, um, a, a really nice size. I love the big wells. You can fit your biggest brushes in there and you've got plenty of room to work. You can find ceramic palettes like this. They generally will have a plastic cover if they have a cover. Uh, if you, But they're only really suitable for working at home because they're so heavy. And if you drop them, you could end up breaking them. And they're expensive. So whereas this cost me, oh wow, the price tag is still on here. Oh my gosh, look at this. $13.95 from Penobscot Paint in downtown Bangor back when they were still open. Um, this is the Jones palette. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's lasted pretty well. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to get rid of it because I have so much great paint in there. That's my M. Graham watercolors. And I would take this uh, masking tape around the edge and write them down. I wrote down the numbers and the uh, names and the pigment numbers just so if I did need to replace a color and I didn't have an M. Graham, I could find a, um, a replacement. I usually do reorder the, a tube of M. Graham as I use them up. And I do, I do really like this palette. It's just disappointing that it's starting to crack. Uh, but since I keep the lid on it usually, the bottom part of this is actually pretty decent. It hasn't discolored that much. My mixing area hasn't really discolored. You can use a magic eraser on the um, the inside if it starts to stain. I don't really bother with too much staining. It doesn't bother me as long as I can see my mixes. But um, but that's, you know, that's something that can happen to these palettes, unfortunately. Now, in contrast, I'm going to show you a fairly new palette that's made from that same material. This is a Zoltan Zabel palette. Um, so let's just compare the covers. Ooh, compare the covers here. You can see this is bright white and this one is yellow. And it's good to see them side by side because sometimes your cam my camera will auto adjust. I get getting glare on there, but you can see this is, is much brighter. Um, this isn't as big. It's only about half the size, so I would use this on tutorials. The reason I don't have this in tutorials very often is that I can't fit the whole palette and my painting in the frame at the same time. And it might be a little confusing if you're learning how to mix color if you can't see the colors being mixed, I think anyway. So this again is a covered palette. The thing that I don't like about this palette that I like about the bigger one is that you have to use your lid for mixing because there's not much space here or you have to... Um, when I first got this, I just filled up those top rows with my Turner watercolors, but then I had some paints dry in tubes from another brand and I added them in there because I didn't have any place to put them and I didn't want to throw them out. Um, so, because I would just kind of mix in these little tiny areas and it's really not enough space for mixing if I'm doing a larger painting, so I have to use the lid, which it's nice that it's there, but um, 
you know, there's just another option, but you can see how nice and white this is. And this is the same material, but it will get brittle eventually. Hopefully I can use up this paint before that gets brittle. Um, so, and again, I use the masking tape around the edges to identify my colors. Now, a step up in the plastic palette game that will give you a much better quality and longer lasting palette is a thicker plastic. Now there's no like um, identifying marks, like you know how your recycling will have like a chasing arrow on the bottom because these really aren't meant to be recycled. Um, but you can tell this palette here is made from kind of like the same material that your plastic half pans are. It's thicker, it's less brittle, and it, um, it'll it just last a lot longer. Your half pans and full pans, you should be able to refill them and reuse them indefinitely because they shouldn't crack and, uh, and break apart and get brittle like those thinner plastics. So this is a um, pro art travel palette that I got probably uh, probably about 15 or more years. Yeah, it was longer than that. It was probably 20 years ago or so. I got it at the same time as this palette and I use this just for travel and this one for studio work um, and this has held up really well uh, I don't have any issues with the hinges it's um, I've refilled the paint several times it works really well the only thing I don't like about palettes like this these folding ones is that it's got wells on the top and if you're not careful that paint can drip onto your lower wells and if you're using a paint like M. Graham I can't put the M. Graham paints up on this side because it can migrate. If I had this palette on its side which I did in my paint box and I didn't realize it um, and some of the paints kind of dripped because they have honey. Same thing with Sennelier or any other honey based watercolor paint. Um, so you do, I, I don't like how, I don't like palettes that have the, the wells on both sides personally. Something you want to think of when you're selecting a palette. Um, I have more palettes than I need and uh, it's definitely not necessary so if you choose a palette that you like right off the bat then it can save you in the future. Um, and another palette that I really like and when people ask me what should I pick for a big studio plastic palette this is the one I recommend. This one clearly has discolored but I'm going to tell you something. I got this palette um, I think about 23 years ago and it was given to me second hand and the person that had it before me probably had it for you know 15 or 20 years herself. So this is a John Pike palette. They have ones with smaller wells and wells that go all the way around but this is a really thick plastic. It's like the uh, the folding palette I just showed you, but if you look at the thickness of this palette, this is probably like an eighth of an inch thick versus, um, I can show you the lid side by side, versus this one here. This is rolled over, so it's hard to estimate how thick it is, but if I tip it on its side, I don't know if you can tell, it's, it's probably like a 32nd of an inch thick. Uh, this is so much more durable and um, it, yes, it discolored because it's plastic, but it hasn't really cracked. Now I do notice a little crack and I don't know if it was, if this was on it when I received it or if it just happened over time and it doesn't seem to be all the way through, but there is like a, like a scratch. You know what? That might, might just be a scratch. I don't think it's a crack because it's not all the way through. There's a scratch on the palette, but, um, but there's no cracking and even though it's discolored, it doesn't really... It doesn't really bother me when I'm working with it. I could always put a white ceramic plate in there if I wanted to for mixing, but I don't find that to be a deterrent, especially if I'm working, you know, I work on natural white watercolor paper usually as opposed to bright white. Not that there's anything wrong with using bright white. I just like that warm feeling of the natural white. It's completely personal preference, but I would recommend a Pike palette if you are considering a large studio plastic palette. Um, you can find, a I don't know if Pike makes a ceramic palette, but I know Cheap Joe's has one and it's very similar. So if you're looking for something like that, it's gonna this these will run about twenty to thirty dollars, and the ceramic one's gonna run you around fifty to seventy-five dollars. So you know you can see there is quite a quite a difference. So what I use because I do love to mix on a ceramic palette is I will use um, you can buy watercolor palettes that are made of, cer of ceramic. You can buy them in all different sizes. Um, I like this one here, and I don't know if I got this one on Amazon or Cheap Joe's, but I think I paid around. Um, I think I paid around seven dollars for it for it but I haven't seen them that cheap since I think these usually run around fifteen dollars but something else that works really well are like um, if you see any like vintage glassware that you like these egg dishes work really well and um, for four dollars at it was Dollarama up in Canada I got this big leaf plate now I wouldn't want to put out 
paint on this indefinitely like I would on a studio palette and let it dry but if you're putting like a few dabs of paint to work and have mixing area it works great you could use it till the paints used up and then you would wash it and set up for your next painting um, but you can always set that inside of your bigger palette or next to your bigger palette if you wanted that mixing area on glass but you don't want to spend a lot of money for a uh, for a glass palette because if you do need one for traveling and you don't you know you might not want to have two palettes going um, is basically what I'm saying there so I just want to kind of give you a little bit of advice for plastic palettes like I mentioned I mean getting 20 years out of a plastic palette is pretty good you know I'm not saying that you know that it's a huge deal but if you're gonna like have your palette out in sunlight if you have children uh, or, if you're, or if you're giving this palette to a kid um, it's just not as durable either so if you're not careful with it if you're um, banging it around if you're dropping it you know this is more of a brittle plastic and it could break where a pipe palette would probably last a little bit better and something like this would last pretty well but you know I still wouldn't want to go and drop it I wouldn't want to go and drop the glass ones either but um, but yeah just look for a thicker um, less brittle plastic if you're choosing a plastic palette and uh, they're all gonna yellow unless you keep them out of the Sun I'm really surprised that <laughs> excuse me that this one hasn't yellowed because I've had it for so long and it's been I've traveled with it and um, this one has stayed surprisingly very white pro art it just says pro art on it I think um, I think I probably got it at Penobscot paint but I think I've well AC Moore's no longer around I think I've seen them at AC Moore as well but there you have it the problem the potential problem with plastic palettes <laughs> thank you so much for watching uh, I hope you love watercolor as much as I do and you found this useful please give me a thumbs up if you did and until next time happy crafting bye bye